Good evening. It's Facebook Love, number 221. Number 221. I haven't read every day. Um, but today was, uh, today is an important day to read. Because, um, because today America crossed the threshold of 500,000 lives lost to COVID-19. Um, I remember when we passed 100,000 and how I ached inside. And I have felt this number coming up. And I think the weirdest thing is how empty I feel. I think there's a name for it, um, compassion fatigue. It's not that I don't feel compassion. I feel a ton of compassion. Uh, I think what I'm struggling with is that the number is too big and I, my human brain doesn't know what to do with that. People on the news keep giving us things to compare it to, all the deaths in World War II and all the people lost in Vietnam and add them up. Um, I don't know, I'd like to stand on the side of a mountain and see that many trees all in one place or, or that many American flags in one place. Um, for a week now, I've been saying to my husband and my friends that uh, for some reason, all of a sudden, now that we're coming to 11 months, uh, no, it is 11 months since we've all been sheltering at home, um, now I'm weary, now I'm now I've had it. And and I think that I'm struggling with holding two realities together. The the reality of how I personally feel, which is missing friends and, and wanting to hug people. Um with the with the sense that uh, I should be grateful for my safe and beautiful home and and having work I can do from home. Um, and then in the third, actually if I had three hands, the third one would be all this loss. All these people who've been sick, who aren't getting better quickly, or are struggling with medical bills, and all these lives that are just gone. Which made me think about um, church. Uh, I know it's not uh, popular to say that you go to church. I do. And since this started, I've been doing online church, which isn't the same, and yet um, it's better than nothing. And uh, our parish is particularly lovely. But what I thought about is that I think that poetry and being in church f fill the same slot. I think I think that a lot of us look past what's happening in front of us. We listen past each other. We look past what's happening. And sitting and listening to a sermon or to a reading from the Bible or even from any book with deep thought in it slows you down, makes you see and feel and hear. And the poetry does that for me too, whether I'm writing it or reading it. So I haven't read any Mary Oliver in a while, and today, with this grim milestone, I think we need some of her particular way of seeing. So um, I have three rather short ones. The first one is called Angels. You might see an angel any time and anywhere. Of course, you have to open your eyes to a kind of second level, but it's not really hard. The whole business of what's reality and what isn't has never been solved and probably never will be. So I don't care to be too definite about anything. I have a lot of edges called perhaps, and almost nothing you can call certainty. For myself, but not for other people, 
That's a place you just can't get into, not entirely anyway, other people's heads. I'll just leave you with this. I don't care how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. It's enough to know that for some people they exist and that they dance. Angels by Mary Oliver. This next one um, makes me wish that I'd been able to meet her and hold her hand. It's called Watering the Stones. I feel like I could have written this. Every summer, I gather a few stones from the beach and keep them in a glass bowl. Now and again, I cover them with water and they drink. There's no question about this. I put tin foil over the bowl tightly, yet the water disappears. This doesn't mean we ever have a conversation or that they have the kind of feelings we do, yet it might mean something. Whatever the stones are, they don't lie in the water and do nothing. Some of my friends refuse to believe it happens, even though they've seen it, but a few others. I've seen them walking down the beach, holding a few stones, and they look at them rather closely now. Once in a while, I swear, I've even heard one or two of them saying, hello, which I think does no harm to anyone or anything, does it? Watering the stones. This last one is called August. Our neighbor, tall and blonde and vigorous, the mother of many children, is sick. We did not know she was sick, but she has come to the fence walking like a woman who is balancing a sword inside of her body, and besides that, her long hair is gone. It is short and suddenly gray. I don't recognize her. It even occurs to me that it might be her mother. But it's her own laughter-edged voice. We have heard it for years over the hedges. All summer, the children, grown now, and some of them with children of their own, come to visit. They swim. They go for long walks along the harbor. They make dinners for 12, for 15, for 20. In the early morning, two daughters come to the garden and slowly go through the precise and silent gestures of Tai Chi. They all smile. Their father smiles, too, and builds castles on the shore with the children, and drives back to the city, and drives back to the country. A carpenter is hired, a roof repaired, a porch rebuilt, everything that can be fixed. June, July, August, every day, we hear their laughter. I think of the painting by Van Gogh, the man in the chair, everything wrong and nowhere to go, his hands over his eyes. August by Mary Oliver. A sad day, a hard day. Stay healthy. Get your shot when you can. This is Facebook Love. I'll see you again.